welcome to Case Closed, I'm Tracy Perry. We'll soon go inside an actual courtroom in the Warren District Court to see a real small claims case in action. Under Michigan law, small claims cases may be brought by individuals seeking $3,000 in damages or less. Neither side may be represented by an attorney in small claims court, and the judge's decision is final. Now for the case of the cable confusion. Mr. McCabe, this is your case. Thank you. Uh, tell me what you're here for. It started with uh, the first digital transporter adapter. This, is, this belongs to WOW. To who? To WOW. To WOW. They're one of the cable companies yes. that are in competition with Direct and Dish. And, but Comcast never told me that if you try to record or instant record or time record, and you want to channel surf or watch another channel, you can't do it. You mean on the, the box? The box the itself. DVR? And I've wondered because everything in the house is digital and why they seem to need a digital converter. They call it the second device and the third device were step-top boxes. They're nothing more than converters. Well, all right, let's, let's back up here. What did you have in your house before you, you got a hold of Comcast? You had some sort of I had an antenna service? on the roof. You had what? Antenna on the roof. The old-fashioned kind? 360 degrees. The old-fashioned kind? Yes. yes. Montgomery okay. Wards. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I have a 19-inch color TV, Montgomery Ward, 1983, in the basement. Okay. It's connected so, to a $30 VCR forehead, and I can tape. I can't do that with this device or the first step-top box or the last one. Now, they think that I broke the male stem on the recorder. That's not true. Bear in mind, 10 technicians, only one said, Mr. McCabe, that's not going to do what you want it to do. And he pointed to the first set-top box, not this thing, because I found out through trial and error that if you went to another channel, this is going to record what you were, the channel you went to. So, Bef But before you got this, I, maybe I misunderstood you, did you have cable service at all? Yes. Oh, you did? Yes, okay. with Comcast. With Comcast, but you had the analog cable I'm going to say service. five years approximately. Did you have the analog, the yes. regular cable service? Yes. Okay. And you, you had, did you have it through a cable box, or did you have the cable directly hook up to the TV? Directly behind? to the VCR and then to the TV set. Okay, so you didn't have the box where you could get all that information Didn't about. need that until they say they went digital. Right, then you needed the, the converter. I also had their telephone system, okay. uh, which they charged me originally $5 for a modem, went to 4 and then it went to 7 So you got that converter, two of yes. them, is that right? Right. Okay, and you hooked it up. And I couldn't get what I was paying for. Well, you were, could you watch TV? Yes. Well, what did you think you were paying for? I was trying to record and watch that at my convenience. On your VCR. In the good old days, we used to stay up at 11.30, but as we got older, <laughs> we'd go to bed at 10, 10.30. Well, the wife true. likes to watch The Good Wife, <laughs> and I like The Mentalist, and it's on at 10 o'clock. Right. So I'd go down to the basement, $30 TV or, uh, VCR, and it does the job. But my position is very simple. I'm trying to shorten up on this thing that, and it's gonna be your judgment call. I know. The first JVC was not a year old, and they said, the resolution manager said that I broke it. I have here, I'm a retired serviceman, technician for Michigan Thought of Gas. For Michigan Gas Company? Yes. All right. So, they didn't catch a, a stranger with this thing. The first guy that came in, in in November 4th to put this together, spent a lot of time in the basement and I finally went down because I had one cable wire coming in and one cable wire to the phone system, one to the, the, 20, the 19 inch in the basement and one to the TV set upstairs, Toshiba. I said, why are you changing this one? This is a splitter. This is similar to the one that he took out, and he said, we don't trust that. Okay. And I never did see this again, but he put the splitter in uh, a confined area, and I have, a, I have a picture of it here. What does that have to do with anything? The problem, well, as I understand, is, is you can't is record on the it VCR. It was a position where it was at, okay. and I can show you black and white. 
if you bear with me, that it shouldn't have been where they put it. This Why? De this device here, because you're not supposed to put two electronic devices on top of each other. I connected these first well, time I, around. I have my, my visa, not VCR, but, I have my, my DVD player on top of my cable box, well, on top of my, um, my uh, audio uh, uh, box. That's all on top of each other. You mean I'm not supposed to do that? Well, I had my daughter take pictures of... But I think you're going way off base here. Well, no. No, just listen to me. Would you're upset, if, and maybe I'm wrong, you tell me if I'm wrong, but if, if I understand you correctly, you're upset that you could not record on the VCR with that converter, right? Is that right or wrong? That's true. Okay. Up to this point. Now, there's way beyond that that I'm trying to express to you that they're saving that I broke the inlet of the VCR. But that really doesn't that doesn't really matter, does it? Yes, because it won't reimburse me for my one I bought went over to ABC warehouse and bought another one. Okay. So And I asked for compensation for this. That's okay. where it started. All right. But uh, I brought these things to show you that I wasn't wait let me let me I'll see if I can encapsulate the whole thing. Yeah please, please. We had I had three ten year veterans. I'm not knocking them, I'm not gonna tell you their names. This one guy threw my S cable, which is the second best cable you can use, and it's supposed to give you everything, the video and the sound. He threw all that stuff on the floor, and he connected it with his cables. Turned it on, and nothing happened. And I very quietly said, why don't you try red, white, and yellow from your device to my device to the TV set? And lo and behold, a picture. But I still couldn't get what I wanted and what I was paying for, and that was the ability to tape. You're suing for $1,751, right? That's right. Break that down for me. How did you come up with that figure? Well, um, the cost of the DVD VCR, JVC. Okay, that, that was the one that was, that was broken? Yes. And how did that, explain to me again how that broke and why it's Comcast's fault the, that that the, happened. The confined area that left no room for this thing, you had to physically push it back in. No, did you, you had this before you called Comcast, right? The VCR? No, this was their wiring that set no, this no, up. No, 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 the device that was broken. That was yours? I had that, it was a year old when it Okay, when it broke. That, was the, that was the DVD yeah. VCR recorder? Yes. Okay, what, what it, it worked before you called Comcast, Fine. right? Correct? Yes. Now what, what did Comcast do to cause it to Fry or to, to not they be went operable. digital basically. What they went digital because okay. it was analog and this device sat on top of the of the DVD VCR. So you're saying that the digital signal that went through that device caused it to become no, useless? No. Is that this, what you're talking? No, listen to me. I want you to answer my question because you are not answering my question. You you want to say something different from the question that I'm asking. And I'm trying to understand. No, don't talk. Listen now, okay? I've, gave, I've given you a long stage. And if you want me to rule in your favor, I've got to understand your claim. And if I don't understand your claim because you're not answering my questions, then you're not going to have any chance. You understand that? Yes. What did Comcast do to cause this DVD VCR to become inoperable? Why is it their fault that it's not operable anymore? because of the tightness of their cable, which I indicated, and the room that wasn't there for this thing to be moved in and out in a comfortable way. And how much did that cost you? What, what part of this $1,751 is that attributable to? I'm gonna say let's round it off at $260. Well, that's $260. You still have a lot more here to go. What about the rest of this $1,751? Nope. Where did that come from? This is a six foot component video cable, $19.99. This is the S video. Okay, okay. What do you mean? Why? I'm, I want to know why Comcast should pay you more than two hundred sixty dollars. Because I was honestly trying to get what I was paying for. Okay. And this was too late to take back the Radio Shack. It cost twenty four ninety nine. What is that? It's an S cable. That's the one he threw on the floor and says you don't need that. It's so you wait a minute. So you bought that S cable and you said you didn't need to buy it. Is that what you're telling me here today? You're, the technician said that I didn't need it. Why did you buy the S-Cable? I had it because I was trying to improve what they were failing to give me. What else? Another cable, very similar to this one. This one came with the last on-demand MDVR. 
and it's almost impossible to okay. over tighten it. Come up with the money, okay? I want to know how you're getting to $1,751. You're not even close to that figure yet. In my hand, I have a, a Radio Shack for $77.97. What's that for? It was for a modulator, which I didn't get back in time. So along with that, I had a, and I can't find it, Your Honor, a, a black six-foot coaxial cable. It's in here someplace. And a... Um, You're up to $462.96, well, if my arithmetic is correct. Also, a, a, a one of these. I don't know if you wrote that down. Mr. McCabe, okay. You... you you're, again, you're suing for $1,751. I'm assuming you didn't get that number out of the air, okay? It didn't just come to you from heaven. You, you figured that out somehow, okay? I need to know how you figured that out, okay? You, you've, you've told me how you got to $462.96. Okay. I need to know the rest. All right. You can't just throw a number out there without there some service, reason for it. Okay, if their service technician caught, charges $30. Okay and I objected to it, and it shows on the bill that they took it off, but they didn't take it off. Okay. I'm sure worth at least half of that, and I spent hours and hours and hours on my knees okay. trying to get this thing to work. Okay. So Plus, what's the number? What's the number? What's the dollar amount? You give me time, I'll, I'll go back and look at all, all the No, time. no, now. you got to do it now, right, Mr. Well, McCabe. You're in court now. You okay, can't do it well, later. This is why you're here. I'm going to be conservative and say at least $300 in my time. Are you at least you're retired that's okay I'm still working doing what trying to get this fixed oh, you're not going to get three hundred dollars for that sir okay that's not going to happen. all right how about the time that the girl told me our office is on Shaner and 13 mile road okay I drove up there okay. and I says are you sure she's right next to a supermarket I know there was an office over on Grosbeck and 13 and I drove over there AT&T I went in and I says where what happened to to Comcast. Okay. Bought up on the computer. Well, they got one in St. Clair Shores and one in Harper Woods. Okay, give me a dollar amount. <laughs> Can well, I do it by, it was three hours and 30 miles. Okay, so? Of driving. Okay. I struck out, I couldn't find anything. So how much, you, how much do you think you should get for that? At least $50 of my time. <laughs> no, your time for what? You didn't, you, it, didn't, it didn't cost you anything except for the gas, I suppose. It's not like you took Wear time tear off of my car. Work. What? <laughs> Wear a tear of my no, car. No, 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 Mr. K. So Mr. as a consequence no, of that. No, no, no. All you have so far is $462.96. Okay, I have a compact, composite, composite selector, $16.99, a cable, $19.99, and another six-foot cable, $12.99. Okay. $52.97. That's $515.93 you've got up to, again, my arithmetic is correct, I think it is. Is that it? Thank you, Your Honor. I think that's the most that you can get is that amount right there. One tip for appearing in court is to state your case clearly and plainly, and that is not what's happening here. Let's see what the defendant has to say. All right. Mr. Ogden, your turn. Go ahead. Sort it out. Okay. Uh, upon, Your Honor, upon receiving Mr. McCain's Well, report, I'm, I'm sorry. Let me ask you this. What is your position with Comcast? I'm with the executive customer care. Customer care. So you didn't go out to his house or anything, did you? No. Okay. No. Go ahead. Several technicians were dispatched to his home uh, to investigate the matter, and we determined that the damage caused to the JVC, DVD, VCR was not caused by Comcast personnel. Uh, we have available verbal confirmation from Mr. McCabe advising that he used inappropriate equipment that he did show us in the courtroom today uh, to disconnect the connectors, the fittings you know, used to secure the connection between his equipment and our equipment. The cable wiring and accessories that our personnel use are provided in accordance with the industry standards. Okay? Uh, they're finger tight, that's how our equipment is tightened, and <coughs> as well as to the customer's equipment. Uh, for our defense, we have technicians, Paul Brogan, who was out on November 15, 2010. We have Corey Ramsey, who was out on November 22. These people are here today? They're right, standing right here. All right. Uh, Corey Ramsey, who was out on November 22, and our supervisor, Eddie Long, as well as the escalation point of contact, who handled his initial damage claim presented. Okay. So they're here to testify. Um, they're here to testify that all services at Mr. McCain's residence were operating <coughs> appropriately 
and that instruction was provided several times regarding the types of equipment, wiring configurations that would be necessary in order for him to record programming as described in his equipment. Why don't you get the first person up here who was there uh, at the first the first time? Okay. Who, whoever that is. What happened when you were there? What did you what did what what did you see? What did you do? All I recall is we were upgrading his <coughs> services for him. I found in what way were you upgrading the service? He was upgrading to the digital service. Okay. Well, he had no choice, really. He had no choice. Um, I noticed he had a lot of, you know, store-bought equipment that he's already shown us. I explained the stuff he didn't need. Um, Comcast provides us, like he was saying, the industry standard of, of wiring and connectors <coughs> and all that kind of stuff. So I made sure everything was working to spec for this customer before I left. What did you do when you were there specifically? Um, changed out wiring, connectors, uh, splitters that weren't, you know, Comcast approved, industry approved, just to make sure everything was working properly. So he could get the digital signal? Correct. And before that he was getting the analog signal through the cable but directly hooked up to the TV? Correct. correct? He didn't have a, a box, a cable box? No. You put the converter in, did you give him a cable box or just the converter, that, that, that little converter? The, the little converter. So he still didn't have a cable box. Correct. He didn't need the cable box. No. So he wasn't going to get all that information that you get on the cable box about which program is on when right. and, Correct. And, and all that other stuff. He was just going to get the signal. Correct. The digital signal that Comcast provides in the basic package. Correct. Was that hook? Now he had a, I don't know if you remember, he had a DVD VCR type recorder there too. Is that correct? Correct. Did you hook that up? with this converter box? Yes, it, you know, you have your cable line coming in, it goes into the converter right. to the VCR, from the VCR to the television. Th you know, three steps set up. Was it operational, the VCR? Yes. All right, then you left? Yeah, after all services were checked out to make sure they were working, uh, you know, he had no problems, <coughs> that's when the, the service call ends. All right, bring the next person up here. What did you do when you were there? Or well, let me ask you this. Why were you there? You know why? I was out there on a service call that he wasn't getting a picture on his TV set. Okay. And did you ever figure out why? When I arrived there, I noticed that he was getting a snow, snowy picture on his TV set. And okay. I took a look at the setup, and uh, the barrel was broken on the back of the VCR. The like, barrel was broken on the back of the VCR. I don't know what that means. That's like the RF input that goes from our box to our box goes into the input on this VCR. Okay. And it was broken. It was like it was too tight. And he had tools out that showed that he had been working with the the VCR box trying to get it loose. And I explained to him that it's broken and it's nothing I can do and I can't touch it because it's broken and it's a, it'd be a, I'll be how liable for that. Okay, so there was no essentially no signal that he was getting, right? He, was, he wasn't he wasn't getting a signal because the barrel was broken and it couldn't feed the sig signal back to the TV. Okay, so what happened? Did you leave? I explained to him that I couldn't touch it or anything, and that was that, and yeah, I, I left. Now, what is your response to that? There was no he didn't see any crust and wrench or anything else. That happened on the twentieth. What happened on the twentieth? The lad came with this converter box, and I didn't have. Wait, no, wait a minute. So there was somebody there bef between November fourth and November twenty second. Was a lad there? No, listen the to me. Listen to me and answer the question. <laughs> okay. Was there someone there at your house between November fourth and November twenty second? Yes. Was that true, Mr. Ogden? Is there another person there? We have no record of anyone being on at his home on November the twentieth. You say there was, there. sir? No, November the fifteenth. November the 15th. Well, I, okay, November 15th, then, not right. the 20th. Come on, this, no, you got to help me, Mr. There McKay. two dates, Your Honor. Well, the two, listen to me. The two dates that I have are November 4th and 22nd. There's someone who was there on November 4th, right? Yes. What's the next day somebody November was there? November 15th. November 15th? Yes. Was there anyone there November 15th? Your Honor, there was a, a technician there on the 15th of November, and that was Paul that we spoke to initially. He was there twice? No, he was only there on November the 15th. He was not there on November the 4th. You said it was November 4th. He was there on November the 4th, Your Honor, because that's when this first device, I put that in. He I, came, I, I don't care about that. Did he come there on two days, November 4th and the 15th? There was someone else on November Listen the to me, answer the question. Did he come there on November 4th and the 15th? November 4th. Did he come there on the 15th? Not to my recollection. Who, did anybody come on November 15th? Yes. Who? I have no idea. 
Okay, and your, your recollection or your records indicate he only came on November 15th, not the 4th? That is correct, yes. We have work, a work order that was signed by Mr. McCabe acknowledging that he was out to his home on November 15th. Did anybody come on November 4th? No, we have no record of November 4th. All right, so it's a discrepancy as to what date Mr. Morgan came, either the 4th or the 15th. We don't know. Or there's, a, there's a dispute on that. After Mr. Morgan came, was this person the second person that came? There was a lad on the 20th. No. On, uh, was this person the second person came that came? came on the 22nd. Came? Was this person the yes, second sir. person that came? No, he was the fourth person. The fourth? Yes. It was one on the 4th, the 15th, and the 20th. That's when this first... You don't have any record of that? murder. No, Your Honor. Nothing on the 20th? No, nothing on the 20th. That was a Saturday. So? He set that converter box right on top of the VCR. <coughs> Tell me what you did when you were there. Saturday. Tell me what you did when you were there. When I was there. You I just left, that, right? That was it. After that, I explained to him that it, was a, it wasn't our problem. It was his problem. And, and I couldn't touch his equipment because he had already broken it. All right. Who's the next? Bring the next person up. Mr. Hang, what is your position with Comcast? Uh, at that time, it was the escalation point of contact. Escalation point of contact. What is that? Um, basically, if a uh, call comes in from escalated customers. For what customer? For, for to an escalated customer. An escalated customer. An angry customer. An angry customer. An angry customer. Oh, I see. Okay. You don't call them angry customers. You call them escalated customers, yes. right? Yes. Like I'm getting right now. Would I be escalated to you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> what happened here? Mr. McCabe put a call in. We arrived at his house. To, uh, to assess the situation. Okay, did you speak with him? Yes, I did. All right, I'm gonna regret ans asking this question. What day? It was, I, I don't know personally. Okay, cause, fair cause, enough. Because, you know, I don't remember, it was a while back, but it was late December. Late December, fair enough. What happened? Now, I arrived at the house and all the services were working. So what did you do, did you leave? I, I explained to him the scenarios of how to, to use our service. He, uh, he was, him and his wife, we're both happy with the visit, and I left. You didn't do anything? I didn't do anything. All right, next. Did you speak with Mr. McCabe at all? Yes, I did on the phone. And when? Um, it was in uh, around December 18th, around the time. What did you talk to him about? <laughs> uh, about the escalation that came in. I asked him, I said, well, I'm a supervisor. I could come out, take a look at the equipment that you alleged we broke. He denied it. I said, sir, I have to come out to see if we technically did it. To evaluate if it's our fault or if it's your fault. I called him several times. He didn't want us to come out. It kept going back through the escalation department. Well, that department, uh, and uh, pretty much he kept denying us coming out. And uh, finally, when Tom came out, that's when uh, we realized that he had done it. All right. Yes, sir. You're all set. Thank you. Well, it sounds like the cable company tried to give Mr. McCabe what he was looking for. They sent several technicians to his home. That didn't seem to help. Let's hear from the judge. We have angry people. We have escalated people. We don't have problems. We have issues. You know, I, I love how people speak this day and age. I really do. How they try to dance around what is really happening by <laughs> using words that um, sound nice but uh, just don't really reflect, reflect the situation. Whatever. Listen, Mr. McCabe couple things. First of all, if you're going to come to court, okay, and you're obviously asking for some money, you have to be able to tell the judge exactly how you came up with the amount of money that you're asking for. That's very important. You can't just come to court and throw a number out there and expect the judge to figure out whether or not that number is correct or not or just to agree with you because you happen to throw the number out. You've got to be very specific about the number that you get, the number that you're suing for, okay? And part of your problem here today is you couldn't do that. You're suing for $1,751. You don't really know how you came up with that number. You gave me some of the reasons for coming up with that number here today. The rest of it you were pretty vague at. You know, you, you couldn't put the pieces of the puzzle together. You couldn't put the different numbers together to add up to $1,751. That's a problem because there's no way that a judge can rule in your favor for that amount of money unless you can explain how you came up with it, okay? And you, you didn't do that. So if you ever sue somebody again, 
and you have this number that you're asking for, when you come to court, be ready to explain to the judge exactly how you came up with that number. Put your hand down, okay? I've heard enough. Believe me, I've heard enough. The other problem that you have with this case is that you have not shown to me what Comcast did that was wrong. In order for you to win in this case, in order to get some money, you've got to show that. You have to show that Comcast messed up in some way. And you haven't done that. And I'm not sure that Comcast really messed up, but if they did mess up, you didn't show it to me here today. You know, most of what you're suing for is this damaged VCR and DVD player. You're somehow saying that Comcast is at fault for that. And as near as I can figure out, and it's hard because you don't always answer my questions directly, but as near as I can figure out, what you're saying is because of the extra devices Comcast put in and because they put in a splitter in a particular spot when they should have put it somewhere else, that that damaged that, that component or that, that device. That could be true. I kind of doubt it, but it could be true. But you have to prove that it's true. You can't just come in and say that, okay? Which means you usually, in a case such as this, you need an expert. You need someone that is independent, that can come in and knows about these sorts of things and can say, yes, I looked at this device and it's broken because it was too hot. It was in an area that didn't get enough circulation and that caused it to, to fry, for lack of a better phrase. I looked at this device, the expert could say, and, and it was damaged because a splitter was put too close to it that caused something to happen. That's what, you, that's what you have to have to prove that case. You can't just say it yourself, and you don't have anybody like that. And because you don't have anyone like that, I can't just assume that it's true. In court, you have to prove the case. You can't just say it. You've got some other things that you're asking for here, uh, which basically are um, monies that you spent for components that you didn't need, that you thought you needed, I guess, to fix the problem, but that you didn't need. In order for you to win on that, again, you've got to show that Comcast did something wrong in terms of telling you to buy these components when you didn't need them. And you haven't done that. Um, don't talk, Mr. McCabe. Okay, keep your hand down. I've, I've heard enough. All you've done is, is, is in, very vague sort of, in, a vague, in a very vague sort of way, say that Comcast came out and told you a bunch of things, and then you went out to these different stores and bought components to help solve the problem, which didn't solve the problem that you didn't need, and now Comcast should pay you for it. That doesn't cut it in court. You've got to prove. You have to show that Comcast did something specific that made you buy these components that you did not need, and that there was... There was no testimony regarding that. So I've got to dismiss your case. I hope you understand why I'm dismissing the case, and I hope in the future that you'll understand how to maybe better present the case so that you'll, you'll have a chance to win. And I will give you back your photographs, Mr. McCabe. You can take those. I think everything else you have. All right, case is dismissed. Have a good day. Not a surprising outcome. The plaintiff wasn't able to prove his case, so the case is dismissed. If you find that you're involved in a dispute that you can't resolve, small claims court may be the answer. Thanks for watching Case Closed. I'm Tracy Perry.